Moto's new Hello UI and Nothing OS 2.5 are two of the most cleanest Android experiences that you can find on mid-range phones today. But if you're planning on buying a phone under 30,000, which one is better? Well, let's do a shootout. We'll check everything, starting from the setup process to all the features present in the operating system. If you're here for the first time, I'm Ashad. You're watching Track and Take English, your destination for detailed, incisive gadget reviews. The setup process is fairly straightforward on both these phones and most of the steps are similar. But nothing will not let you move ahead in the setup process without inserting an Indian SIM card first, which is an unwanted limitation in my opinion. Also on Motorola, I got the option to set up using a nearby Android device. This is Android's new feature, which is very similar to what happens on iOS. So I had a phone right next to me and immediately it recognized that and gave me an option to set up the device. That didn't show up on nothing worse for some odd reason, despite the fact that both are running on Android 14. In the entire setup process, nothing does have one more extra step where you set up the glyph lighting, which is very unique to this phone. So when it comes to the setup process, I think Motorola makes it slightly more convenient. Once inside, nothing has 29 pre-installed apps and Motorola has 33. Moto has a few more first party apps and they're mostly all useful. I'll talk about that soon. But you know what? Nothing OS doesn't have even a single third party app pre-installed. For instance, Motorola has Facebook, which of course could be useful for many people and cannot be considered bloatware and you can uninstall it as well, but still, nothing is better in this regard. That's not it. Nothing OS takes up only 14 GB of your internal storage, leaving you with more storage space in the same 256 GB that we tested, and Motorola takes up 25 GB in comparison. Of course, Motorola says that they will improve over the due course of the year, but right now, nothing wins. And proof of that is the fact that you actually get the May security patch on the Nothing Phone 2A compared to March on the H50 Fusion. All right, now let's talk about the design and let's start with the quick settings, you know, shape. It's very similar to stock Android on both the operating systems. But nothing has this very weird implementation where it has mobile data and Wi-Fi bunched in a single widget up top, and that's persistent. I find that a little cumbersome. So with respect to the control center design, Motorola has a slight bit of an advantage, but most importantly, it also gives you one extra option. Yes, the iOS-inspired modern style. Now that's not the default, but if you set that on the phone, then your notifications have to be swiped down from the left and your quick settings are swiped down from the right. So technically, the control center quick setting notification shade is better on Motorola and it's always good to have options. Now lock screen customization is a huge thing these days and on Motorola you get three clock face options. You can also change the shortcuts at the bottom of the screen to your preference and you can change the style of the notification. Nothing also lets you change the lock screen shortcuts but it gives you soup superb lock screen widgets. And these widgets also include quick settings. So if you feel like you can switch off your Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or mobile data directly from the lock screen itself. In fact, these quick settings also show up on the always on display. So once you tap it, you head into the lock screen and you can switch it off from there. Now, I don't know if this is a specific problem with our unit, but peak display seems to be missing on our Motorola H50 Fusion. Are you guys noticing the same? Let me know in the comment section below. And while you're on the way to the comment section below, there should be a subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button. Give us your support. We want to hit 1 million subscribers as soon as possible, but for that, we'll need your support. Now, the home screen design is an elevated, really unique experience on Nothing OS, and that genuinely sets it apart. The widgets alone are so good and even functional. For example, with the recording widget, you can actually record your calls without intimating the person on the other end. Not that you should ever do it, but if you want to, you can. Even Nothing community users requested for that feature the most. Otherwise, if you want to record calls, then it's Google Dialer on both, and you know that it intimates the person on the other end of the call recorded. is being recorded. All right, coming back to the home screen design, both these phones also have the option for large folders. But on nothing, you get the option to change the design of the folder or even have a cover icon. It's all very modern and slick in this really gorgeous dot matrix design. By the way, the minus one page on both is the Google Discover option. Now, while nothing does have great design on the home screen, Motorola gives you a variety of options. For example, you get way more permutations and combinations in the app grid. That is something I really appreciate. The 5x7 app grid is what I love. Plus, you get a lot of different themes and color palettes on Motorola. So when you look at it overall for home screen design, I'd say it is a tie between the two. Finally, let's talk about the features of each operating system, starting with nothing OS. Now, the dot matrix design that is saw the home screen is also present in the recorder app, so it looks really nice. I really wish nothing made more first-party apps with this design, for example, a calculator. But considering Google has a mandate to add its calculator app on all Android phones, nothing making a calculator app would mean that it would be duplication and nothing wouldn't want to do that. So I think that's how they'd have to make those decisions. Anyway, coming to the most important feature on Nothing OS, it's the Glyph interface. Up until now, whatever Nothing phone has launched has this Glyph interface on the rear, which is basically a system of LED lights that, you know, blinks when 
when you have a notification or a call coming in. And this Glyph integration has been done really well. It looks very unique. We've spoken about it at length and there are different things that you can do with it. The one that I really like is the Glyph progress. So if you order something from Zomato or you know you call for a car from Uber, then that progress shows up on that particular strip of flight. Having said that, I think more number of people would find these Glyphs gimmicky compared to the features that are available on Motorola. Moto gestures, which is so uniquely Motorola that everybody knows that that exists. In fact, there are different kinds of gestures that you can do. And it's not just Moto gestures. There's also something called family space. You can create a separate space so that when your kids go into that space, they don't change around the you know settings of the phone. The new Moto Connect feature is also really cool. You can stream games, you can play videos, and of course, use your phone like a PC. In fact, Ready4 is also there for that. I think at some point, that's going to get merged. In fact, you can even use your Motorola phone as a trackpad. Moto Secure also has a secure folder where you can keep your private images, docs, and apps there. Plus, in the Moto Secure feature, you've got a lot of different options, including a pin pad scramble option, which is really nice. There's also Moto Unplugged, which is very similar to the Zen mode on OnePlus phones. Now we know why Hello UI takes up so much storage space. Features. All right, in the end, when you put these two together, it's a tie. I'm really not trying to be diplomatic here, but you can see that both the operating systems have their pros and cons. And which one you like would depend on your preference. Are you and which one you like would depend on your preference. So I'd really like to know what your preference is in the comment section below. I like Hello UI because of all the features. All right, I hope you liked this software comparison. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, keep tracking and stay safe.